Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. And I'm Bob. Happy Friday. Welcome back to our Top 5 Friday Ski Industry News videos. Um, we've got the remnants of a touring ski comparison behind us. Uh, we filmed it yesterday Yep. and just got finished and, and put up today. Um, unfortunately, not much skiing footage in there. We talked about that a little bit, just the challenges of generally don't want like a backpack full of camera gear when you're touring. No, and it's just not nearly as <clears throat> time efficient as right. filming and videoing yeah. alpine skis. Yeah, so, you know, I certainly wish that we could show all these skis in a, in a backcountry touring environment, but it's unfortunately not the case. But hopefully you enjoy it anyways. Yep. Uh, I think it was a really interesting discussion. Um, yeah, I felt like it was even like kind of I don't know, not like I learned something from it, but like sort of like eye-opening or like a nice refresher even for you and I, I think. Yeah, and I was thinking too that there <laughs> is a thousand gram difference and a thousand dollar difference yeah, on and this a, wall. And a huge width difference, Yeah, a 32 millimeter width difference. Yeah. So yeah, big variety. And like, yeah, that Zero G LT80 over there, you use for very different things than you know, this Draco Freebird behind right. me. Yeah. Like the fact that they're even on the same wall is right. interesting. So um, with that said, I would say we are, we're slowly reaching the end of 2025 comparison series. It's kind of bittersweet. Yeah, I mean, that's what happens when ski season starts though, is well, that's, <laughs> kind yeah. of on to the next. That's kind of what I was getting to. Um, we are going to try and get a few more out, like we talked about doing a touring binding comparison. Um, we've also talked about doing twin tips. Um, if anybody's curious, if you, if you like, kind of exclusively follow us on YouTube, which if you do, you should follow us elsewhere too. Um, but for this season, our women's comparisons have just been in written form. Um, Bob and I didn't feel like the two of us were the right people to stand up here and, and do a women's ski comparison. Um, unfortunately, the, we have several talented female skiers on our staff, but they're, they're all busy. They all have <laughs> jobs. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, Emily, who has been in a lot of our content, she's currently living out in Aspen. Every time I talk to her, I try and... Uh, Move her eastward. Just kinda, <laughs> yeah, just kind of put that plug in the yeah. back of her mind that, like, if she wanted to move back to northern Vermont, chances are she could come have a full-time job. And be in ski videos. And be in ski videos. So we decided not to do videos for women's comparison. So, yeah, we're, we're reaching the end. Um, but like Bob said, uh, opening day for Stowe is scheduled next week. So what that means is that we will get right back into like on snow reviews and, and ski reviews and all the stuff that we're not able to do unless we're actively on snow. Right. So that could happen as soon as a week from today. You could see an on snow review from us or an on snow video from us, which I would certainly be very excited about. And then last key, last piece of kind of housekeeping news here is our anniversary sale is still going on, our 40th winter anniversary sale. I, I, I suppose next Friday when the mountain opens, then we're, that's officially our 40th ski season in business. Yep. So pretty exciting. Um, and still all the same deals going on. We've got a bunch of specials in the outlet, a bunch of prices on even things like helmets and goggles dropped. Um, and then kind of the big stuff is, is free base treatments for 2025, uh, skis and boards. And then we also have um, some pretty significant discounts on like ski and binding combos from from 2024 and, and older. Yeah, my there's uncle, still some great prices. Yeah, my, good my, good yeah. inventory. My uncle just got a Brahma 82. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. With like, I think it was an Attack 14. Like, great combo. Sweet. And it was like, oh boy. I think it was like $550, yeah. which is just like such a great deal for a, you know, he was like, I want a ski that's like really good Stable on groomers, not too demanding. He's a pretty big guy, so mm -hmm. like Brahma 82 is perfect. Yep. So pretty cool. Take advantage of that. Um, and then, yeah, next week we'll, we'll start kind of talking Black Friday. Um, I would say it's not going to be like a, a wild change from anniversary sale. So 
if you're looking at something on the site and, and you're thinking about it, uh, I don't feel, I feel pretty confident saying like, don't feel like you necessarily need to wait for the Black Friday sale because the anniversary sale deals are pretty darn good. Yeah. So anyways, that's it. Um, ready for the news? Let's do the news. Sweet. So first topic of the week. Um, this is one that we already kind of talked about a little bit, but it's official now. Uh, Lindsey Vaughn will be returning to racing this season at the World Cup level. Um, this is essentially, Bob, a direct result of the new World Cup rule, uh, allowing racers who have earned legend status to unretire without needing to enter qualifying events. The Marcel Hersher rule. It's I basically the, the Marcel Hersher and apparently the Lindsey Vaughn rule. rule. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my wife was asking about it last last night. She was because yeah. she knew she knows that we do the news, and she was like, "Are you going to talk about Lindsey Vaughn?" And I was like, "We already did." And I guess like she had seen like the yeah. formal announcements, um, and I kind of explained it to her, and she thought that was very interesting. And I I would like to know like how many other skiers have all those criteria. And we were, yeah, and we were kind of joking about it earlier. Like, is there an age limit? Yeah, like, Herm- Lindsay's 40. You brought up Herman Meyer. Yeah, like, does someone like Herman Meyer qualify? And could you be yeah. some, I mean, even older? Right. Some 65 and year just old. Just go do a World Cup race <laughs> just for fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I didn't read the. Yeah. It looked like there were requirements, but not as many restrictions. Yeah, right. Right. So I don't remember seeing any restrictions, just the like five. Yeah, it was like five requirements. <clears throat> um, so, anyways, uh, unlike Marcel Hersher, uh, Lindsay will be returning to the U.S. ski team, um, which is interesting. And you know, I think there's there's certainly potential for her presence to have an effect on the team. I think it'll absolutely have an effect on the team. Uh, not necessarily negative, though. You know, with Marcel Hersher, the conversation was kind of it was surrounding the idea of. Is if he returns to the Austrian team, is he taking a spot from a younger skier? And you could take that and apply it to Lindsey Vaughn as well. And like, it's hard to necessarily say say no that she wouldn't be taking a spot. But then, like, the other side of it is like having these younger athletes having Lindsey Vaughn on their team as a mentor. Like, yeah, that's a benefit in itself. I'd also have to imagine that the pipelines of the Austrian team and the U.S. team are vastly different. Probably. And that the Austrian is just, like, those people are certainly competing for podiums. Sure. As opposed to the U.S. team, which might not be there yet. Sure. So I don't know. Maybe the maybe yeah. their level of the quality is, isn't there yeah. as much for the U.S. where the experience would be the bigger benefit. I, that's kind of what I think is that yeah, having her experience is yeah. is, is just gonna like have a, a big positive effect on the team, and I don't know. Time will tell. Um, so far, we we don't know too many details. We do know that she will likely compete in Super G and downhill. Um, I I would be hard pressed to see her doing well in slalom or giant slalom just at her age. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. She, yeah. I, she probably would agree with me. I would think. Well, it seems like the speed events still are more accessible for advancing athletes. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know that like youthful exuberance seems to help yeah. in slalom quite a bit. Yeah. Just the springiness of your legs. Um, so we don't know what her first race will be, but yeah, I'm excited. Yep. Go Lindsay one. Um, and then second topic of the week, we have more FIS news. Um, this is kind of a, a triple header of FIS news, Bob. So we've got slalom in Levy in Finland this weekend. Um, and, and with that, uh, I don't know if it's, if it's our esteemed colleague, Matt McGinnis, who, who really is, is forming this opinion or, or this uh, prediction, or if this is coming from somewhere else, but... Statistically, there is potential for Michaela to secure her 100th World Cup win at Killington. Could be cool. Yep. Now, she has 97 right now, and we've got a slalom race in Levy, and then another slalom race in Austria, and then slalom and giant slalom in Killington. Quick math, Bob, she would have to win three out of four of those races. You sure about that? Yeah. 
I hope so. <laughs> I was to, traditionally pretty no, good at you. math. Um, and, you know, Michaela is an incredible athlete, but I think that's, that's a tall task even for somebody of, of her caliber. Yeah, but maybe the uh, maybe that's like something that's a that's a, driving, that's a goal of yeah. driving force of hers. Yeah, yeah, and that'll just spur her on to try that much harder. I don't know. Yeah, no, it'll be. Inter- I mean, I'm. I don't know that I'm going to wake up at four a.m. to watch the the run one tomorrow. I know that I'm not. I may wake up at seven to watch run two. Okay. What's nice about that is like typically Michaela will be going more like at eight. Right. So if I'm not at the TV right at, right at 7, I'll still be able to watch. Uh, and then this is another kind of interesting article from, from the FIS. Um, we're sort of in like a, a golden age for men's slalom. The, basically the top four men um, are absolutely dominant, like an incredible mix of talent among them. And, and now we're also throwing Marcel Herscher back into the mix. And kind of an interesting perspective because... We talk a fair amount about the U.S. men's team being stronger in speed events, but this is kind of alluding to the idea that it it could potentially be more just perception-based because the top slalom athletes are just so gosh darn good. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. I think there's also, like, there's less speed skiers in general so that the U.S. bunches bunches in in or groups up more. Yeah. Again, more of an optical thing than... Yeah reality but yeah i just thought that was interesting um and then last kind of fis news here uh they have mandated the use of airbags for super g and downhill and if you're thinking airbag like avalanche airbag uh that is not the case <laughs> that would Darn be, it. That would be <laughs> that's what i thought wild um basically they wear like a thin layer underneath their speed suit that inflates during a crash so there's like sensors and stuff that know when you're falling and just, I would imagine it's pretty thin, but just kind of gives you a barrier against your skin. I mean, have you seen them for like the motorcycle? Like the yeah, I think those inflate like, more. Yeah, those are pretty. Those are pretty puffy. Yeah, yeah, but similar concept. That's what I was expecting. Yeah, I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty thin. Yeah, but anyways, that's it for FIS news. Uh, these next two topics are pretty quick. Um, Deer Valley and Rad Smith debut a new hand-painted trail map for Deer Valley. For Deer Valley, uh, Rad Smith was kind of tapped by, is it Nehues? Nehues, yeah. I'm pretty James, sure. James Nehues. He's kind of the the famous uh, painter who has done just a, a vast amount of trail maps in his his career. Um, you know, he's kind of passing the torch to Rad Smith, who has one of the coolest names in the world. Just wonder why I couldn't have been named Rad Smith. Well, because your last name is St. Pierre, so <laughs> yeah. that would have been like a challenge there. But yeah. Rad St. Pierre would have been pretty cool, too. It's never too late. Town Hall's right over there. Yeah, right. <laughs> your name's Robert, so like right. Rad could be short Just for a Robert. Nickname. Yeah. 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 Um, so anyways, the painting itself is very well done. Congratulations, Rad. Uh, and the expansion is, is pretty massive. Yeah, that's a. I mean, just that whole area is a pretty robust yeah. ski zone from yeah. kind of the the edges of Deer Valley to ca- the end of canyons at Park City. Yeah, and I mean, then I, right over the hill to Brighton. Yeah, and just that whole zone is crazy. It really is. I mean, I felt that when I was out there, um, and I I couldn't help but just kind of think about how sprawling Deer Valley felt. Right. There's just like moderately pitched groomers <laughs> extending <laughs> as far as you could imagine yeah. in every direction. Uh, and yeah, it's just hard for me to wrap my mind around it being even bigger. Yeah. So pretty cool. Um, and then last topic of the week, uh, we've got an article or actually two articles from Powder Magazine, both kind of highlighting ski development. Um, the first one is kind of focusing on the Solomon Depart. Uh, that's a kind of limited production ski that I don't think we've done anything with public facing yet. No, I think it was like it was l- late in the season and early in the embargo, perhaps. And yeah, just. Some- we just kind of... It wasn't really an embargo. This is a, this is a fun anecdotal piece of information. 
um, I was basically kind of like gently suggested to that I shouldn't put out depart content because they <laughs> wanted it really coming from like from Solomon athletes yeah. like urban athletes yeah so it's kind of like a interesting progressive twin tip it's like 106 underfoot um, I do have like one of the only pairs in New England I think and and I'm definitely gonna be skiing it this year so you'll see more Solomon depart stuff from us um, and then the other one is highlighting K2's ARC facility. Uh, this is their kind of headquarters in Seattle where they do all of their ski development. So like in-house engineering, in-house testing, all that stuff. Uh, ARC stands for Advanced Resource Collective. Um, and it is a very impressive uh, building. Facility. Facility, thank you. Yep. Yeah, um, it is a very impressive facility. I, I was lucky enough to get to tour it um, twice on, on the same trip uh, a few years ago. Once, like, basically by myself, just like with the line and, and K2 engineers. So I got to like have one-on-one -on -one chats with, with all those guys and really, really dove in deep. And then the next day we did like a, a group tour that was a little bit more polished and mm -hmm. less, less exciting from for you <laughs> yeah um but it truly is very impressive and you know we've we we i think k2 manufacturing comes up in conversation quite a bit um a lot of people have like kind of a negative perception of, of their skis being made in china but i think when you understand um both how significant this facility is and the fact that they own their factory in china um I think it, it's easier for people to understand why their skis are still really high quality. Yeah. And they can build little small batches in that totally. arc facility from what I understand. Yep. And yep. you could sit, we could sit here and be like, we want this ski with this wood and this metal yep. and this shape. And then they'll take it over there and build the ski. Yep. That's yep. pretty cool. And if anything there, it's a little easier for them to do that than, yep. than some other manufacturers. They're, they're very nimble in that sense of, of testing different yep. things. That's it for the news topics. Uh, lastly, we have our edits of the week. Um, a few in here that are, are more like full full feature films, um, including this first one. The first one we have a Circle of Madness from The North Face. Uh, I'm looking forward to watching this. It's like 46 minutes long. Yep. Looks like a good one to uh, put on the TV while I run on my treadmill. Yeah, big big production. Yeah. Um, and then we've got Spliff by Dylan Siggers and Liam Morgan. This is presented by Line Skis. Uh, not quite as long, perhaps not quite as polished, but looks like a good watch nonetheless. Um, and then we've got White Gold from Bobby Brown. Uh, I have always enjoyed watching Bobby Brown ski. This one's awesome. Yeah. This little edit. Yeah. It is really good. He's just like, I've always thought Bobby Brown has such an ideal mix of like raw athleticism with like a good sense and understanding of style yeah you know what i mean he's like kind of that like it's like he was built in a lab right the park skier just built in a lab so yeah. anyways check that out uh and then we've got um skiing circus tricks with fabian bosch from red bull snow which is wild. All you you should either watch it last, or watch or it first, watch it and, first not. and forget <laughs> everything else. Because like I know it's the <laughs> shortest, but it's probably the most memorable. Yeah, this one's really this is as cool as the Bobby Brown one was. This one kind of blows it out of the water it's, in my mind. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, that's it for this week's top five Fridays. Um, shout out to uh, our friends down at our shop in Killington. Um, which, if you're down in Killington, go check it out. Uh, it's it's kind of been rebranded, the exterior, and you're going to see a lot of Ski Essentials logos and a lot of blue, which is, is really exciting. But, yeah, shout out to those guys because Killington opened, uh, I think, what, yesterday to pass holders and today to the public. Yeah, they got a cool shop and they're skiing. I know. <clears throat> Look Je at us. Jealous. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, a lot of people are back on snow. Um I don't think I'll be getting down to Killington this weekend, although it's awfully tempting. Uh, and then, yeah, Stowe, fingers crossed that 
will be on snow at Stowe on, on Friday the 22nd. Um, take advantage of that anniversary sale, free base treatment. Uh, that's certainly not going to last all season by any means. Um, and then, yeah, next week, maybe a touring ski comparison. Binding? Sorry. Maybe a touring binding comparison. <laughs> maybe a twin tip ski comparison. Maybe we'll take a break from comparisons. I saw some... Uh, I saw some comments asking for quiver videos. Yep. I, I could do a quiver video. I'm, yeah, I'm a little bit better suited this year than in years past since my last one. You've got a boot quiver, too. Yeah, I was hoping to mix the two. You always have a boot quiver. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll do something next week. Hopefully, we'll do a lot of stuff, including an on-snow video. Yep. So keep your eye out for that, uh, and then just hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. Bye.